As far as numbers are concerned, Axios reported, the Israeli paper, that if, quote, Biden loses a sliver of the Muslim vote in Michigan, Pennsylvania, or in Georgia, Biden loses. Mm. Politico writes that if the Muslim abandoned Biden campaign unites the Muslims in punishing Biden, Biden loses the election. For them, it's not a maybe. For them, he loses the election. Right. The only ones who don't believe it are the Muslims. Mm. The only ones who don't believe in the power of the Muslim vote are a large strand of the Muslims. The reason why I say this is because it's an accurate reflection of the state of the Ummah. Mm. In that the Ummah has never actually been weak. The Ummah has always had power. Ibn Khaldun used to say that the Ummah is always one generation away from glory. Mm. Because Ibn Khaldun argued that Allah has already equipped the Ummah with the power it needs to be glorious. It's whether the Muslims choose to deploy that power or not, and whether they believe in that power. Once the Muslims do that, it unlocks an irresistible wave that results in glory for the Ummah. When you look at the states as it stands right now in the US, it's abundantly clear that Biden is now trailing behind Trump. If elections are held tomorrow, Trump wins. I think, Sheikh Yasser Qadi always said, don't speak definitively about the will of Allah, use the word as if. So mm -hmm. I will use it there. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a shout out to Sheikh Yasser Qadi. <laughs> it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of all of the states that he could have chosen to be the swing states to decide the election, it is as if Allah chose the states where the Muslims have the deciding vote. It is an unprecedented opportunity where 1% of the population have almost the power of 51% population. We essentially, Muslims in America, essentially have the same power as the Zionists at this moment in time. Mm. And I'll explain what I mean. What makes the Zionist lobby so powerful in America? It's not that they deliver candidates. If it was the case that they deliver candidates and that was their sole power, then the candidates would do what Bush did to the Muslims in 2000, where the Muslims deliver him to power, but then he betrays them when he gets to power <coughs> because he doesn't need to listen to them because well, he's already delivered them to power. What's the point now? Mm. The power of the Zionist lobby is in its ability to punish candidates. It's in its ability to say, if you veer left or right, we don't care what you do, we will punish you and ruin your career. Muslims today have the ability for the first time to demonstrate a power similar to the Zionists and the Black Caucuses in which to finally punish a candidate for supporting genocide or the like. The Muslim vote, as far as numbers are concerned, are a significant block. The reason why Biden, it hasn't had the impact on Biden that they want, is because Biden is convinced there is no such thing as a Muslim vote. And mm. I explain what I mean. Yeah. Biden believes that although the mathematics show that Muslims can punish Biden, Muslims are so badly divided that there is absolutely no way they will organize like the Zionist bloc. There is no way they will organize like the Black Caucasus block. That even if Sheikh Omar Suleiman and Sheikh Yasser Qadi and all these Mashaykh come out and they say, guys, we cannot reward genocide, you will still have a large strand of Muslims who will tell you, but what about Trump? Mm. But what about, you know, the, the discomfort we might feel for the next four years? What about these things? Biden believes that there's no precedent of Muslim organization on a level in which it can actually pose a threat. Instead, there have always been a small group of Muslims who've engaged with the system, who have always been derided by the Muslim community. So the Muslim community steps back, these small groups, so they've never been a unified bloc. And that's why Biden believes that when November comes, the Muslims might be angry with the genocide, but come November, they will not be able to mobilize in a way to punish him and therefore their fears are exaggerated. And that's why for Biden, the more important vote is the organized Zionist vote to make sure they don't feel like Biden abandoned the Zionists, make sure Biden, they, they, he doesn't want them to feel like Biden abandoned the Israelis. He believes the Muslims will eventually come back anyway. They'll be angry today, tomorrow, but when they sit in their lovely big homes or the like, and they have, they have big homes, Muhammad Jal, mashallah, I can't lie. My flat is decent, but I can't lie to you. When I, when I entered, I felt claustrophobic after coming back from Texas and these places, like mashallah, they have. Mashallah. Biden says that as a result of the, the, the comfort that many of these Muslims event, they will not compromise it for the sake of an event that takes place thousands of miles away. And that's why I think that to answer your question directly, Muslims <laughs> mathematically and politically have the power, in my opinion, to punish Biden and set a precedent for the first time in American political history that just as when you upset the Zionists, they can punish you, just as you have, when you upset the Black Caucus, they can punish you. They have an opportunity to set a precedent that when you punish the Muslim vote, when you punish, when you, when you do genocide, the Muslims also have the ability to punish mm -hmm. you as well. Mm -hmm. Whether the Muslims will take it is a different issue altogether. And I think that one of the things that is worth noting here is that I understand 
the concerns of the American Muslim. Mm. American Muslim says that if Trump was in power, he would do worse. That's true, probably true. Although sometimes when I see the way Biden is digging his heels in, I, I don't know how true it is anymore. Mm. That's probably true. But the point of punishing Biden is not to reward Trump. The point of punishing Biden is to let every American politician know that there are red lines with the Muslim community. That okay, we'll tolerate this issue. We'll tolerate this issue because scare the Republicans. But surely genocide is a red line. What I fear is if Biden wins the second term, the historians will write that not even a genocide of 20,000 Palestinians on the other side of the world could convince Muslims to punish genocide, Joe. Mm -hmm. What I fear is if Biden wins the second term, then you know right now you have the Congress people, they go to the mosque and say, Assalamu alaikum, and they come and they say Mubarak Eid, or in, in the wrong way, they're trying, so the, the assistant tried to tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. What I fear is they won't even come for Eid. Because they'll say, look guys, we committed a genocide against 20,000 of their brethren on the side of the world. Yeah. And still, they were so scared of Trump. They were so scared of four years of discomfort. Because let's be honest here, and I know so many American Muslims might be upset with me, but let's be honest. Trump is not going to be sending people to knock on the houses of Muslim doors and say, you know what, I'm giving it over to this family. Now you have to go live in a refugee camp. Trump is not going to mobilize the American army to go and commit a genocide of 20,000 American Muslims. Trump will not do anything remotely like what the Israelis are doing. And that's why I liked Hind Mekki's tweet, the Sudan, American Sudanese activist, where she's put a tweet out and she said, because the Democrats, to put context to Hind Mekki's tweet, the Democrats are concerned, even though they believe the Muslims are divided, they are concerned that rabble rousers like us will tell the Americans that unite and, 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 and do something and punish genocide, Joe. Yeah. I haven't said that. I'm just analyzing the situation to make sure I can get through the border. I'm flying to Washington tomorrow. Yeah. But in any case, <laughs> <laughs> don't publish this before I get to America. In any case, so Kamala Harris released a video where she said, we're launching the first anti-Islamophobia initiative in the history of the US. She didn't do it because she was moved by the pictures of what's happening in Gaza. Yeah. She did it because the Democrats sat at a table and they came and they said, these Muslims, though they, it's likely they'll come back to us in November, there's a chance they won't. There's a chance they'll punish genocide, Joe. Let's throw them a bone to make them feel like we care about them while we're massacring and committing genocide on the other side of the world. Yeah. Then they sent out an email to the Democrats saying, we're against the Muslim ban. I liked him making street. She responded to this. She said, we survived four years of Trump. Trump is not something new. Like, we saw Trump, it was bad, but we survived it. Mm. We sort of know what we're getting with Trump. 15,000 Palestinians did not survive four years of Biden. Mm -hmm. You're asking me to vote for genocide Joe who committed genocide on the basis the other guy might commit a genocide. Mm -hmm. And in the words of Imam Tom, mashallah, like lovely, lovely. I met him for the first time a few weeks back as well. Lovely brother, more, I was about to say more impressive in real life. He's impressive on camera and he's very impressive in real life as well. Imam Tom also put a point where he was asked, he said, okay, so if Trump comes and he's worse, he said, I'd rather take the possibility than the definite. Mm. I know now that Biden is a genocider. There's a possibility Trump be a genocider. I'll take the possibility over the definitive. Yeah. And that's the point I want to make is that Muslims now have a golden opportunity to elevate their status in American politics by being a society capable, not only of delivering candidates in the way they delivered Bush in 2000. I know some are scarred by what Bush did, but the reason Bush turned his back on the Muslims was because he knew Muslims couldn't punish candidates. This is the first time in the history of America where the Muslim vote has the chance to punish a candidate. I feel Allah gave this opportunity. Whether they will take it is a different matter altogether. I understand there are different ramifications. It's easy for two people sitting in London to say it when we don't mm -hmm. live in the US. If the Muslim ban comes in, maybe we won't be allowed in or the like, and we'll be here in London. And London's pretty nice despite its miserable weather or the like. They are the ones who perhaps will end up suffering, yeah. not in the way the Palestinians are suffering or the like. But certainly, in, to answer your question directly, the Muslim vote is quite possibly, I say it is, but we'll do quite possibly in case someone cuts it later and says, Sammy got it wrong again. And I'm, and I'm prone to get it wrong as well. Sure. Only, a command belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perfection only Allah ta'ala. It's political we only, analysis. We only yeah. analyze the dynamics. Yeah. I believe that the Muslim vote will be the decisive vote in November. Inshallah. 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 And I believe also that the Democrats are gambling now that the Muslims will remain divided, that the Muslims will not be organized, yeah. that the Muslims will turn to each other and they will say, okay, he committed a genocide, but guys, Trump might do to us something worse or Trump might do horrible things to us instead. And the Democrats are gambling that the comfort of the American life will be enough to deter Muslims from compromising that for the sake of punishing Biden for the genocide that he's done. And that's the issue for the Americans.